Hi, my name is Ken Rasmussen. I wrote and maintained the microbiome prescription site. And today I have a rather nice set of announcements and a new release with probably about 20 additional pages of information, some of which should be easier for people to handle. Um, my model is basically a Lego model which is to give you lots of different ways which you can build things up to suit your own particular needs and that also means some complexity to it okay so let's take a look at the first thing which is what has just been added which i deem to be oh, something i wish i had had three years ago okay it is a simple question which is is a microbiome value abnormal or not? Is it a reasonable value or not a reasonable value? That is a bit of a interesting dilemma. Um, as you can see, some testing sites will provide you saying, hey, this is your average, this is your value, you need to improve it. The problem is that we have two numbers and we don't know how wide the healthy range is. Is it a little? Is it a huge amount? We don't know. We just have two numbers tossed at that, and one is less than the other, one is better than the other. And usually the assumption is if you are less than the average of a healthy one, you're deficient. That is a nice way of selling things like probiotics. Hey, you need just probiotics because you're deficient. Why? Because you don't have the average number. And the average actually means, in theory, that 50% has below the average and 50% has above the average. And the number is basically zero value. Now, let's go on and see what some labs are doing, which is a more, more reasonable way, which is they use a average of a normal distribution. A normal distribution curve is a curve that looks like a bell curve, etc. And what they do is they go and take their tests, apply, get in 30, 40, 50, even 100 people, which are deemed to be quote healthy, whatever that means, do the measurements, and then they go and calculate the average, which they expect to be right here and the standard deviation, sometimes called a sigma here, and one, two sigma, and then basically they take the average plus two sigma, and that is a point where too high is deemed to have happened, and this is a point where too low is deemed to happen. If the too low value happens to pass zero, and worse impossible, it's only too high. So that's basically the, the procedure which is often done for conventional medical labs. Now, um, if it's indeed a bell curve, we know from mathematics, which I happen to be trained in, that the most common value should be the same as the average and the middle value should be the same as the average. In other words, the most common value, which is the value right here, you see, is right where the average is. And the middle value, should be right there too. Half the values are higher, higher half the values are lower, and that value, which is the middle value, is also what the average value is. That is the criteria to show that it is indeed a bell curve. Okay, let's take a look at what we actually have in reality out in the microbiome. Here is an example for alpha protobacteria, and we see that the average is 11,000, the middle value is 1,000. The most common value is way down at 60. And we said, wait a minute. Well, let's look at the curve. We should see, oops, we don't see. We see something which is, looks very, very different than the curve up above. Basically, we are not dealing with a normal distribution. Bottom line, making any assumption for a normal distribution is bogus, it's wrong, it's ugly wrong, and it's misleading. It's often done for complete ignorance, other times because you don't know what to do, uh, often the correct solution is hire a, a high price statistician or data scientist, which unfortunately get expensive and 
often they would defer away from doing that. Also, that statistician needs to be knowledgeable about the microbiome and not doing canned formula. So it becomes a bit of an interesting challenge. The other way which is done is they go and they go and get all the samples and then they say, okay, we take the top 2% uh, uh, samples of being too high and bottom 2% as being too low. So they're doing it ignoring what the shape of the curve is, just the top or the bottom 2%. The problem is the top 2% or the top 5% or the bottom 2% or bottom 5% is a number arbitrarily picked out of the air. There's not a rationale to it. With two standard deviation and a bell curve, yes, it's logical, irrational, it supports for mathematics. Saying the top 2% or bottom 2% or box outliers or whatever makes a ton of assumptions about the nature of the data. Underneath all the assumptions is basically a belief or a hope that it's a bell curve. And if it's not a bell curve, have fun. You're going to get some strange numbers which probably will not apply very well to reality. Uh, it probably give over-reporting of abnormal highs or, uh, or over-reporting abnormal so or the exact opposite. Either thing can happen. Okay, so we have a curve that looks like that and what I have fortunately gotten license for and have implemented is something called, called the Kaltoff Moltrup range. It's proprietary things. It doesn't come from medical science or microbiome. It's never one of these fun statistical areas. Fortunately, I'm a statistician by training. And basically, it looks at the shape of the data and in terms of the mathematics, for those of you who are mathematicians, we basically try to construct an appropriate b spline and then inspect the different derivatives or momentums that the curve has. And from that, a process is done to determine where what is effectively close concept to an inflection point happens. And from those things, we get the values for something being abnormally high or abnormally low. Let's take a look at the example. Here we have example of US income population. And guess what? Doesn't that curve look vaguely like a curve up above? Oops, it does. So in other words, the mathematics dealing with income population is a better match than the bell curve. And what we find out in the literature, as you can see with the chart down below, is if we do a transformation, in this case a logarithmic transformation, we find that we have a big section in the middle where things are pretty much flat, straight line. And what we want to do now is say, okay, flat straight line is the middle class, the middle income, the middle range of value. So anything which is outside of this flat line, going up here or going down here, are abnormals. Now, depending on the data, just could be a very small section or very big section. But what we're doing is we are finding the values based on the percentiles. Oh, sorry, on the, uh, not on the percentile, but on the shape of the data, which means we are not making any assumptions. We're letting the data speak for itself. And whatever it comes up with, which in some cases could be, nope, everything it is absolutely fine. If this chart here is nothing more than the middle section here, there will be no upper and lower bounds. Everything is in range. There's nothing abnormal, no matter what the, your values are. So that's basically it. And um, we have infection points there. So that's the basic process. Now let's go over and look at some actual thing i've just post just updated the site so i'm hoping i don't have too many breaks but let's go over so let's go over to the site i'm going to go over to the site i'm going to do log on i'm going to be my usual lazy self and i'm actually going to use some samples coming from biome um site um which works which been cooperating very nicely with me we go in and we see things are similar but you notice that we have component analysis sitting here. We have a couple other things got removed or shifted elsewhere. So let's go in and take a look at uh, bacteria taxonomy for the thing. And what we find is 
we now find, as with other things, we have a list of bacteria on the side with check boxes so you can do a hand picked taxonomy when you want to. We have the normal ranges, the lows and the highs there, and where your value are. And also, we give you a percentile, in this case, 11th percentile which is far more than, than the usual 2% or 5 percentile. 11 percentile value actually puts you outside of what is deemed to be in a normal range. And we have more pages as we go down. And as we have done indicated before, I can just click flag, click it twice, and we see all the ranges there. Some cases we have it, one case up to the 20th percentile, the count 750, the bottom is deemed to be 1,000. So we have all of the bacteria listed which are outside the normal range. So that's one of the um, component analysis. Let's go over to the next one, the end of product percentile. Again, it's the same process. The count here is the count of bacteria which produce this so that you could count, in some cases, we are counting the species and the genus and the family. So we are triple counting things. So hence, sometimes the numbers can get obscenely large. And that's not unexpected. The problem is we don't want to miss anybody else. So again, we have the percentiles here. And you can go down and as before it's there. So we can go on to taking a look at keg modular. The same process, we have the outliers of things which are deemed to be outside of the uh, middle class or the normal class here, etc. And we even have medical conditions. And medical conditions is similar, and in this case, we have nothing. And the medical conditions, I actually did a rework on because I was not happy with the results. The results were Mm, uh, not as reliable, but here we have all of the things. Some cases you have zero percentile, and zero percentile isn't marked as being significant because for medical conditions we only concern about the high value. So we have all of those things, but now if you actually go over on to changing your microbiome, you see that the outliers are individually done. So if I click that one, then what I have is all of the outliers. Now, what you have is ones which are the numbers, the maximum numbers seen in the, in the um, samples are highlighted in blue. Other things are not, for example, here we have a high 390, but the range of values is relatively small, which means it could well be nothing more than noise. Um, that is things which has no particular impact. They're just things that happen. And we again have the check boxes so you can go and hand pick and build things up. Let's go over to another one. Let's go over to end products. End products, the same thing. And we only have, in this case, we have six end products which are outside. We have Almost all of them are low, and as you probably may remember from prior cut, if I click here and go through, it will. Uh, uh, one second, I got one minor glitch which I need to fix. Um, okay. Uh, let's go over and do it the proper way. So, uh, oh, I know what the problem is. There's a bug and I'll fix it. Uh, okay, which is typical for demos. You go and you discover, oh, discover the bugs and, um, yeah. So, um, Continue onwards, and I'll get other issues fixed by the time you hopefully get up to the page. We have cake enzyme medical conditions. You go and take a look at, and there's nothing there. And you can change a different sample, and still nothing there. In other words, there's no none of your bacteria is a good match for knowing existing medical conditions. In other words, you probably should be happy. 
Uh, I gained reliability of PubMed data is iffy, but I'm trying the best I can to make a practical application. Okay, now that gives you a whole bunch of different things. Let's take a look at a couple of other changes. Uh, let's go back to uh, back to outliers, which I hopefully will work this time. And we go down, we see a variety of things. Um, and I'm going to take a look. Here is one which we have a low amount of. I'm going to click on the percentile, which should, fingers crossed, take me to a chart. And it does. So didn't break that. So the chart shows you what the mode is, the most common value, which again, is low. We have the low value, we have the average value, the median value is the value which is right in the middle, and the high normal, anything beyond that is deemed to be abnormal. Um, I'll probably be doing a little bit of adjusting over time with some of the parameters to improve the fit, but at the moment um, it's there, and you get the values up at the top and you also get the value you have so all the data is there if we flip over to log value which now gives it and you can see where the low range is here and the high range is here so we end up seeing okay we can see visually and you can see that from low range to the high range is almost a straight line down here, you can see the line has changed dramatically. So that means that this problem, 20% is abnormal. And up here, we, we see it there, it triggered here, but once you get up a bit higher, it even worse and worse and worse. So that's there. And sometimes a single reading can trigger the, the point. With, uh, and so that's why the more data the more reliable it is. So it has unreliability with small number of data. Okay, let's go back and flip over to the, uh, the alternative, which is if you go into samples, and we have, if you have multiple samples, you should see a multiple sample comparison there. If you click that, you can select the bacteria you want, and you have the choice of looking at them or looking at them and only the outliers in them. So in other words, two samples, what is the outlier on both samples or on one or the other to see how things have changed and how the critical items improved or not. Click report and we'll see the first thing we see there, we have two things, both of which are low. Uh, second sample has improved, but still an outlier. It's getting pretty close, mind you, to being within a normal range going down here. We see another one which is outlier, other ones which had no value, really improved, no value. I don't highlight necessarily, but in this case, no value means that you're just starting to come up to the good range, which is good. Number one, we're getting the same. Here's number one where you have high values and it has disappeared, so that is good apart from the fact that it's lactobacillus on group and if you go and you click on the um, there it will take you down and actually give you what is in this particular family and a breakdown for your sample how many you have on a percentile ranking for each member of the family and if fingers fingers are crossed if we are real lucky we okay we flip over to information about streptococcus and at this point we have the ability to go over and just look at the chart by itself and there we can see what the chart looks like there or flip over to using log normal values and then we can see here again you see between the low values and the high values we have pretty much a straight line there and when the curve starts changing is when we deem it to be abnormally high or abnormally low. So it gives you a way to visually have confidence in the um, count of Motrep um, ranges for top and bottom. Okay, and now let's go back and 
go back to our samples. And in each of the samples, we also have quick suggestions using Jason's method. And we also have quick suggestions using the of Motrep method. So in other words, we are going to be using the norms for the for, from the Caltop Motrep and only those which are outside the range to get suggestions from. So we click that. It will list all everything that's there. You will get a bigger list usually than with Jason's because we are looking at every single bacteria. Uh, I may do a bit of refining there to reduce some of them, which are rare, very rare ones, and get rid of those for the moment. But what we have down below is the list of supplements, and we have also things to avoid. And the usual things with suggestions okay so quick recap you will now find under component analysis a total of five new reports you will find under changing your microbiome six new or updated reports you find all the outliers there for five and you have a new quick suggestion for number six um the Kaltoff Moltrip isn't in the advanced suggestions yet. It will be probably the next day or two. Um, got a lot of catching up. So that gives us 11 new reports. And if you go over to samples, multiple there, and you'll find that there's 10 more there. So now we have 21 new reports for you. And again, if you click into it, or actually let's go into, let's do click outliers. We have 11 reports, but for each one of those reports, we have more reports by clicking on here. If you click here, we will hopefully go and see the bacteria that is associated with um, this particular item and if we go and click on here we'll get the distribution ones and showing where you are and where other people's values are so we have therefore we have from those 10 new reports we have Two additional charts we have 30 we have about 50 new pages or variation of pages to keep you entertained and busy and digesting so i'll shut up now because you got a lot of exploring to do i have one or two bugs i need to fix okay that's it have fun and let's see what the next weekend revision does